There are numerous autonomic function tests. Nobody can undergo all of them. What is the most important autonomic function test? To me, the most important autonomic function test is the history. That's the most important autonomic function test. And we're going to go into what that means. Because it doesn't mean a checklist. <clears throat> the, this is, these are the elements of what I would call a screening autonomic history. First is a chief complaint. In a few words, what's the main problem that's bothering you that's bringing you here today? Just a phrase or a sentence. It sounds kind of Mickey Mouse, but I can tell you that uh, I, know, I had a case of uh, a lady where the chief complaint eventually led to the discovery of a new syndrome. Chief complaint. This is a lady who uh, is a grandmother in D.C. who uh, came with a referral, uh, uh, referred for orthostatic hypotension. And when I asked her, what's the main problem that's bothering you, that's bringing you here today, I was thinking she was going to say something like, well, I faint a lot, or I can't, uh, I can't uh, tolerate standing up for a long time, or some, you know, something like that. But instead, she said, I can't make spit. Well, that's weird. What happened to orthostatic hypotension? Spit? Spit, that's a parasympathetic cholinergic thing. The watery saliva. Uh, she said, yeah, I, I, I can't make spit. And I'm constipated. And the combination of the two, I, I don't eat. I, I can't. I, everything tastes like cotton. Uh, it's like cotton in my mouth. And I'm so constipated. And uh, so I've stopped eating. And she sort of looked like a, like a concentration camp survivor. Uh, uh, just, or... or terminal cancer patient, chief complaint, she can't spit. Well, I, you know now from the organization of the autonomic nervous system, that's not sympathetic noradrenergic failure. Parasympathetic, not, not sympathetic noradrenergic. Well, one thing led to another, and it turned out she had a pan dysautonomia, a very rare situation where it is true that the entire autonomic nervous system is shot, failed, and this was because of a circulating antibody to the neuronal nicotinic receptor. Remember, that's the, the receptor for acetylcholine that mediates ganglionic transmission. Um, and that was the first reported case of what came to be called autoimmune autonomic ganglionopathy. And it all came from the chief complaint, from the history. The history of the present illness is the next section. Uh, the history of the present illness is the patient's story. This is really key. And it always starts the same way. When was the last time you felt completely healthy? And there are only a few possible answers to that question. One is, I was healthy until, and then whatever it was, and the person can quote the day or what the situation was, and I've never been the same. Or the person can say, I've always been sick. I was sick as a kid. I was out of school, blah, 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 blah. Uh, uh, third possibility is, I don't know. It's just been so gradual over the course of time. And that makes a huge difference in terms of your differential diagnosis. I've always been sick. Well, then you think about the developmental stuff, the genetic and so forth and so on. Um, I, was, I was healthy until then you think about some acute uh, event, maybe an infectious disease and so, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, I don't really know. It's been so gradual. Well, that, that points to more to a kind of a degenerative process where there, there isn't any uh, overt event. Um, you always ask, uh, of course, have you noticed anything that makes things better or things worse? A really important clue. 
I had a patient who uh, was referred from, came from Switzerland, who, uh, who reported that he had painful sweating. That's weird. He, like he would, he, would, uh, he would think he would drink orange juice, let's say, you know, something to make a little bit of salivation. It would hurt because a headache, uh, really weird. He said that uh, cocktail onions, you know, the little onions that go in uh, like a martini thing, was extremely potent in causing painful sweating. What am I supposed to say about that? I don't <laughs> Where does that come in in the autonomic? But then when I asked him, does anything make it better? He said, yes. Oh, really? What was that? What's that? He says it's a, a drug called trospium. I've, I was put on trospium because I have uh, a bladder problem, like a cystitis kind of thing, which is a little odd in a man, interstitial cystitis. And I was put on trospium, and it made my painful sweating go away. Well, that's cool. Now I have to think, what the hell is trospium? So, you know, while I'm on the phone with the guy from Switzerland, I'm getting on the, the uh, on, on uh, PubMed or whatever, and, and it turns out that uh, trospium is a muscarinic cholinergic antagonist. He was taking it for his interstitial cystitis to kind of cool down his bladder. But uh, drugs are stupid. They don't, they don't, they go everywhere. And, uh, and it also inhibited uh, muscarinic receptors in his uh, forehead and it eliminated his painful sweating. That was cool. So I brought him from uh, Switzerland to the NIH and we did our autonomic uh, workup. We figured out why he had uh, painful sweating and how to treat it. And uh, it wasn't kind of a miracle uh, if trospium, a muscarinic uh, antagonist, uh, uh, worked. What about just a local cream that he could apply to where it hurts? And we, com we had that cream compounded, uh, and it was like a miracle cure. And he went home cured, very rare. Anyway, uh, that's, uh, that's why you always ask, does anything make it worse or better? Because you never know. Um, when it comes to uh, a review of systems, there are certain, there are certain things you, you have to ask about. I'm, uh, I'm kind of a chauvinist. If I'm dealing with, uh, with uh, a woman who's, let's say, complaining of, uh, or, or being referred for dysautonomia, or whatever that is, I ask, who does your shopping? Because if the person answers, well, I do, I love to shop, that's the end. Uh, what I'm expecting is, well, not me. Because, and why is that? Uh, because I can't tolerate standing up. I, 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 I feel like I'm gonna die, I, uh, I'm gonna faint or something. I have to curl my legs up like pretzels, uh, uh, so I can't shop. Uh, that is a, that's my screening question for uh, orthostatic intolerance. Uh, but more generally, you can ask, uh, do you have any problems if you're standing up for a long time still? Typically, and people who have orthostatic intolerance, they feel better when they're exercising, when they're actually muscle pumping, than when they're still after exercise. So if somebody complains of dizziness, I feel like I'm gonna faint during exercise, very different, you know, very different thought process than the clinician's head compared to, well, I'm okay when I'm exercising, but as soon as I, as soon as I stop, that's when I get into trouble. Do you sweat like other people? You don't, you don't ask, how long have you not had any sweating? How long have you had dry skin? That's, that's leading the witness. Uh, do you sweat like other people? Um, um, and that's a pretty direct question for the sympathetic cholinergic system, right? If the person says, I never sweat, I used to sweat until, and then I've never sweat ever since, uh, it's also important to ask about uh, 
heat, heat intolerance and, uh, and, uh, and a large meal. It, with a large meal, uh, blood gets shunted towards the gut, the uh, digestion, and that can come at the expense of the blood pressure. So a classic, uh, a classic uh, presentation of neurogenic orthostatic hypotension I call uh, Miami Chinese restaurant syndrome. You got this old person, a retiree, of course, in Florida, goes into a Chinese restaurant. The Chinese restaurant is super cold, air conditioned. The person pigs out. After all, the person is a retiree. What are they, what are they supposed to do? So they pig out in the Chinese restaurant. Then, uh, uh, after the meal, they go out into the heat. They get into their car. It's blistering hot. They vasodilate. Uh, and they, that's dangerous. They can lose consciousness and get into an auto accident and cause a lot of problems. What's going on? Well, first of all, uh, when the person eats, uh, when the person pigs out, there's a shunting of blood towards the gut. Then when the person, and the person is sitting, when the person uh, goes out into the heat, there's, there's vasodilation from the heat. The person gets into the car and the person is forced to be sitting in a sit, be in a sitting position. Uh, this combination of the postprandial uh, situation and the uh, the heat uh, and the Im immobilities uh, uh, sitting up is asking for orthostatic hypotension. That's why I call it Miami Chinese restaurant syndrome. Uh, do you make spit like other people? Uh, this is, this is a parasympathetic cholinergic uh, phenomenon, uh, although the proteinaceous kind of thick saliva, that's more sympathetic noradrenergic. Any problems with urination? Uh, uh, it, a, a really important question to ask in somebody with uh, Parkinsonism, for instance. People with Parkinson disease often have uh, urinary frequency and urgency. People with uh, the Parkinsonian form of multiple system atrophy, they have, or they can have, uh, urinary retention. They have to self-catheterize and so forth. You don't ask, uh, do you have urinary retention? You just ask, do you have any problems with urination? Uh, any problem with bowel movements? Uh, uh, we already talked about the, the, uh, the lady who had the constipation and, uh, and, and dry mouth. Any problems with sexual function? Those are the screening questions. This is the most important autonomic function test.